What do you do in a relationship if you just end up feeling like a mom to your partner? We'll get into that in a bit, but first, am I, 25-year-old female, experiencing financial abuse from my partner, 30-year-old male? I'm a stay-at-home mom to two kids. My partner makes all of the money. I first became a stay-at-home mom in 2019 with our first. Since I stopped working, I've never had access to money. When my bills need to be paid, I have to request the exact amount. When I want to buy a candy bar, I have to ask. When I need pads, I have to ask. I expressed to him a couple times that this made me uncomfortable to my partner and asked if, at the very least, he could transfer me the dollar amount needed to pay my bills for the month on the first of the month and this became a huge argument about how I'm weird for being upset that the person who makes the money keeps the money in their account. I let it go. Recently, we struggled a bit financially, and I helped the best I could by doing DoorDash all the way until one day before I gave birth. He got a break financially and was given a huge lump sum of money. I'm breastfeeding my son and told him that I needed some new breast pads, and he told me to use my credit card and he'd pay the amount, just to give him the receipt. Well, I went to Walmart yesterday and Dollar Tree, knowing we've been tight on money for so long, but we're no longer, I splurged a bit. I spent $4 extra at Walmart and $10 that we didn't discuss at Dollar Tree to get my son some activity books. Since we were tight on money, he's been playing with the same toys for about 6 months, so I just wanted him to have something new to play with. Knowing how he acts sometimes, I tried to hide the Dollar Tree purchases so he wouldn't be mad. When I came home, he left for work and I got everything that I hid out, including the receipt. I sat down and, of course, he forgot something, came back, saw everything. He got angry and said he's only paying for my breast pads. I can find a way to pay for everything else. I told him I felt like a slave to his money and he blew up on me about how all I do is spend money and expect him to find ways to replace it. If I want to buy something, it needs to be discussed. I told him this was unfair because just over the past two days he had gone to Walmart for diapers but came back with chips and the next day came back with pizza, neither purchase being discussed with me. He said it didn't matter because it was his money. He said if I wanted my own money so bad, I should go move in with a family member with our kids and go get a job. Somehow this also led down the path of him telling me that I don't do anything but feed the kids and that if I left today, nothing in his life would change. I tried to explain that if I left today, his life would drastically change, as he would now be responsible for either thousands of dollars of childcare, or he'd be responsible to stay home and tend to a toddler and a newborn, which is more than just feeding. He said no it wouldn't, because that same day I had a phone therapy session with my therapist, and while I was in the car talking, he cared for the kids for two hours while texting me getting no response, making business calls all while the newborn was screaming and the toddler was running wild. So since he can do these things for two hours, my job can easily be replaced. I'm honestly feeling like this is all a form of abuse, but I don't know. I don't know if I'm truly being a pain and should respect his money as his, or if what I'm feeling is correct. I feel like my role is being diminished, and maybe I'm not doing all I can. We aren't really talking right now and I'm wondering, Should I apologize and respect his wishes of discussing any purchases I want to make? Even purchases as small as one dollar? We're not married. Now, I understand if they want to be, like, smart about their money and, like, discuss these things, but when it comes to things that are, like, a five dollar or a ten dollar purchase here or there very occasionally to support your kid and their searing reaction, it's definitely abusive in my opinion. Honestly, I love their absolute denial over how expensive it's all of a sudden going to become being on their own. Also, hi, I'm Steven, and if you guys enjoy tricky relationship topics, why not hit those like and subscribe buttons down below? That said, our next story is, boyfriend asked for a break, and I said we should break up. My boyfriend, 24-year-old male, and I, 22-year-old female, had been dating for about 5 months. Throughout the relationship, we had a problem that broke my trust in him around the two-month mark. He didn't cheat, but I found out he was lying about stuff regarding an ex, but I decided to stay and work things through. It made me pretty insecure for a while, but he worked hard to regain my trust. I always felt loved, appreciated, and prioritized by him, and he would sometimes tell me how he's never felt more comfortable or happy before. Things seemed to be going well, and I thought it was nice how our relationship was progressing into something deeper or more intimate. 
Once school started, he was obviously much busier and the first week was hard. When we met up that week, I noticed he changed his lock screen to an old wallpaper, when for months it had been pictures of me or us together. I brought it up and he said that he didn't think much of it, but that's when I started having a bad gut feeling. He also didn't compliment me at all that day when he's usually very verbally affectionate. The next week felt a little off as well, but I chalked it up to work and school stress. He didn't seem excited as usual to see me and it felt like he wasn't there mentally. Over the next few days, he started mentioning how he's been feeling overwhelmed and that he's been craving more alone time. When I asked if we were seeing each other that week, he was pretty vague and eventually admitted he just wants to be alone. I told him I was feeling like a burden on him recently and he didn't say otherwise, rather that he's been meaning to tell me for a while but found it hard to since we both like spending time with each other and how his anxiety was going through the roof lately and everything's been feeling off for him. We continued the conversation the next day, and he was up front and told me he wanted a break, that he's been thinking about our relationship for a while and he's not sure if he's ready for a long-term relationship, and wanted a break to think things through. I felt kind of blindsided because he never brought up any issues except feeling overwhelmed for the past two to three days. I told him we're done and that if he's not ready for a relationship, he shouldn't have gotten into one, and he agreed that we should break up. I asked him many questions, but a lot of the answers were, I don't know. He said I didn't do anything wrong, but he started thinking about how he's not ready at times where he made me upset. He said it wasn't because of school or work stress, but that he just didn't want to be in a relationship at the moment. That he still loved me and knew it was selfish, but the right thing to do. His last message to me included something about wishing he'd met me at a different time. I blocked his social shortly after to help me move on, but now that a week has passed, I'm starting to have regrets. I feel like I gave up too easily on something good considering he's never been in a serious relationship before and I know he has difficulty opening up. Now I wonder, did I do the right thing? Would things have changed if the break happened? Was he truly not ready or did his anxiety and insecurities get the best of him? I'm not sure if he'd ever reach out to me again, but part of me is hoping he does. I feel like a lot of people would agree that if you're two months into a relationship and you're already having issues, it's kind of in general just not a really good indicator. I think in time you might come to realize that. Our next story is, did I, 42 year old male, do the right thing, 40 year old female? I'm divorced about 2 years at this point, married 17 years. I, 42 year old male, met someone, 40 year old female, about a year ago and we quickly clicked. Both came from marriages that ended badly to what I describe as controlling people. We were good for each other and communicated well. I saw a lot of what I didn't know I was missing in my marriage. It was good for the both of us, although possibly too soon to get into a relationship for both. Our kids met late spring and got along well, so there was the start of a blended family too. I posted a couple months back about some challenges. She is wonderful in many ways, but some behavior challenges were arising with her child, partially due to absentee father. It was a lot to take, and there was rarely a break from it. I felt some level of marriage pressure, although she'd frame it as a joke. Add to that personal life issues that came up with unexpected home repair, big layoffs at work, and a general feeling I was losing control of my personal life, a big takeaway from my marriage I didn't see in the moment. Best way I can describe is while I overcame a lot of the divorce, the real world knocking me down set me back. I became more isolated and pushed her away. I feel guilty for it but the time to myself did help focus on the new personal pressures and nurture time with friends and hobbies, etc. Frankly too, it's helped me process more grief for my divorce and the real world issues. I had a lot of personal progress in the last two years, but maybe the nature of our initial bond kept some of that in the forefront. Plus, I really don't know what I want out of life. This was good, but is it truly what I want? Can I more fully process my grief and life pressures with time to myself? I guess my question is, did I do the right thing? I've also felt like I've needed permission to make choices, both for my upbringing and my marriage. I know this hurt her and I feel terrible about it. It does have parallels to how my wife left me, and she made similar arguments I made then as to how a relationship could help work through issues. I don't know. I think OP's right in the sense that it probably was too soon because I feel like a lot of what they're describing is indicative of them honestly needing some time to just discover themselves and figure out what it is they want in life. 
It sucks that you had something that seemed good and you hurt people by rushing too quickly, but it's completely understandable, especially after a 17-year controlling marriage, that you do need some time to just figure yourself out. Our next story is advice for having a conversation with my 23-year-old female roommate, 22-year-old female, about an uncomfortable night. Last night, my roommate invited two men into our apartment that she had just met at a restaurant. We took shots and I actually had outrageously good conversations with both of them. The issue was that my roommate was really off the chain and was being super inappropriate sexually and socially. Her advances towards a certain guy completely disregarded every social situation, and it was often difficult kindling conversations while she was saying random things to him completely out of context, poking or prodding while we were trying to have an involved conversation. It felt a little like there was some passive contention with her lack of ability to be involved. I tried to involve her the best I could, however, I mostly let her make her own choices. At points, she was sprawled out on the floor where everyone could see the all the possible bits without seeing the actual bits. There were a lot of just uncomfortable, messy social things like this. At other certain points, she was on top of this guy cradling him. He'd be holding her, but mostly dodging her for the sake of talking. She was acting crazy and everyone was completely aware of it. I felt incredibly bad for the guy. When he had left to get more alcohol, she was insistent on joining him when he was not at all receptive to it. He left to drive himself after having a confrontation with the cops, to which I began to panic and was adamant on her staying behind in the apartment with me. She became absolutely frantic and hysterical. She kept trying to leave the apartment and look outside for him when there was absolutely no logical reason for her to do so. I pleaded with her and even rightfully trashed on the man to try to ease her worries. It did not work and she ended up going downstairs by the outdoor entrance, sobbing and yelling. There were a good few other scares throughout the night involving drunken thoughtlessness, to which I immediately shut down and rebalanced things appropriately, though each occurrence had really stressed me out. I was mortified. I still am. I absolutely plan on bringing it up with her. I was just posting here to gather some perspective and any possible approaches to the situation. So from what I'm reading here, I think actually OP's the one seeing this in a flipped perspective. I think considering the roommate's actions, they brought these guys back for a very specific reason, and OP was the one actually kind of blocking things and trying to just engage in conversation. I think the whole thing was a confusing, kind of sloppy mess all around. I don't know if anything is going to be resolved trying to talk this through. Our next story is I, 22 year old female, don't think I like him, 25 year old male, anymore. He had been my friend for years, a very supportive friend. We spoke almost every day about literally everything. At some point we both decided to start dating, no labels as of yet, but we hook up and we've been open about our feelings for each other. This has been like this for the last few months. However, I feel as though I do not like him and I feel horrible about it. I realized today while we were texting that I find him incredibly annoying. I can't explain it, it was unbearable. Like I just never wanted to talk to him again. It feels so unfair that after everything he's done for me I feel this way about him. But I have to be honest and I don't want to be rude to him. I really don't think I like him. I feel as though I could bear his annoyance as a friend but not as someone I'm dating. But if I end this, I would have lost a friend, which is fair enough, but I would miss him a lot. I don't know how to tell him this. The last time I tried explaining to him that things may be going too fast with us, it was as if everything I said to him went in one ear and out the other. That's another thing about him. It's as if he doesn't listen to me and likes to come up with his own conclusions to what I've said. I find that infuriating and I've told him about it. How do I tell him this? How do I even tell him? Like, I don't know where to begin. So I think this is just kind of the risk you take when you get into a relationship with a friend. The realization is, not all relationships last. I would say probably most relationships don't end up lasting, sadly. And I don't think it's an easy thing to go right back to being friends with somebody that you had a falling out in a relationship with. Our next story is, boyfriend's family hates me. Do I leave or am I over exaggerating and should continue pursuing this relationship? Hey everyone, my boyfriend and I have known each other for 6 years and have been together for about 2 years. He's 24 and I'm 23, and we are certain we want to get married and start a life together. 
problem is, his family hates me, tells me I create issues, and am the problem and he works with his dad, and has investments because of his dad. I'm currently in law school and my boyfriend has his high school diploma and a business with his dad. My boyfriend and me were not okay three or four years ago. When we met, he always compared me to other girls and told me to change things about myself. Would tell me I'm too skinny, my boobs were too big, I wasn't rude enough, how his ex was so hot, how he misses his ex and wishes she was there, etc. We were not together at this point. He smoked a lot of weed like 4-5 to times a day and drank often, whereas I never did. So I cut him off because of this disrespect. And we met years later. He stopped smoking, barely drank, and overall, I would say changed for the better. So I gave him a chance. So I met them in the beginning of the year. Prior to meeting them, they always had something small to text him or say to him. My sister was having a big wedding this year, and I had jaw surgery a week after. So everything was naturally about his sister and no one else. In the beginning of the year, his family asked for my measurement size to bring back suits, Indian, for the wedding. I gave them my size of course, as my boyfriend kept asking, and they came back with nothing. For Mother's Day, without meeting them, his mother and her sister lives with them, I spent a good $700 on suits for them for the wedding, never got a thank you, nothing. The mom didn't like it. For her birthday, I got her cake and flowers. Shifting onto his sister before we get back to the mother, his sister kept saying how I'm spoiled and do too much for my man and how I should stop or else her man's going to ask for too much. So my boyfriend at one point had a fight with his cousins because they beat him up in DR. So I told him he should stop hanging out with them because they told him he's a loser. They don't accept his apology when he apologized when he didn't do anything. His sister said I'm not part of the family and shouldn't butt in also commented about how I only have things because of my dad, when in fact I afforded everything on my own because I had a good income. For his birthday, I got tickets for Italy and I paid for the hotels and his family was like, she couldn't do that, you probably did it. They didn't call me to say happy birthday when my entire family called to wish him. Their excuse, they forgot and that he's not talking to his cousin and she won't have her dream wedding if he won't show up. When I met them, they would always tell me about the wedding that I changed his hairstyle and should change it back because it's ugly. They told me to go help him with suits, etc. Never once asked me, hey, how are you? How's your family? Did you want anything to eat? I've gone over so many times, his mom and mom's sister always ask him for food, never me. Never was asked about my surgery and if I need anything. I just always got lectured about the wedding and how I should help with all these things. His parents were gone out of the country and I helped him with his dad's business for a week and his dad said, I don't care if she helped, she didn't do anything special. I just felt like crap because no one seemed to talk to me and it was always as if my boyfriend was the prize and I was this ugly person to them and in their eyes, why did he pick me? I told them about my surgery multiple times. We were out at dinner and his mom said, don't go out the week of the wedding, which was the only week we had before my surgery. He told her I have surgery and she said, okay, tell her to help with the wedding speech. I got upset because no one ever asks about me, it's always like they use me. His sister said she doesn't care about my surgery, everyone has surgery, it's her dream wedding. After surgery I met his mom and mom's sister to give them a chance for him. And his mom said that I don't see a difference in a mocking tone and said only difference is my teeth are black. His sister told him I'm lucky I got him, I won't get him let alone anyone because I'm so ugly. This ticked me off. So I met his sister and her husband the other day, and I didn't talk with her much or say hi, because I felt disrespected, and she got mad. We had plans for three weeks to go to New York yesterday. I spent a good amount on tickets and him the hotel. We didn't know it was her husband's birthday the day we were leaving, and she got mad when her husband said it was okay. We got him cake and hung out with him. She told her parents, and they hid his passport and told him I ruined their family and always butt on with events like the wedding and now his birthday party. But they never said happy birthday to me, but can plan a whole party for him? His sister messaged him and said I cause issues and need help because these aren't reasons to always be mad. How my boyfriend is perfect and I'm the only one with issues. How I'm childish and need to grow up. She said I'm not special for me to behave this way and how I should have said hi because she's older and I should respect my elders. She's 32, I'm 23. His parents and family say I can't marry him until I fix up, and if he marries me, they'll disown him and take everything away. My parents know nothing about this and always treat him kindly and give me food to give him when I leave the house. 
I don't want to tell them right now because my dad's family hated my mom and he left for her, but she never wanted me to have the same problems. I feel bad because I don't want to separate him from his family and the business he loves. When I say I'll leave, he gets depressed and says he wants to be with me over them. What do I do? Everyone makes me feel like I'm crazy and I start crap for no reason. I mean, I think you need to have a real heart to heart with him over this. It sucks, but if he wants you over them, I think that's something that you're going to have to settle on because these people sound insufferable, they don't care, they seem to not like you for whatever reason. So if that's truly what he wants, the sooner you rip off that band-aid probably the better. Our next story is, am I an awful girlfriend? I am at a crossroad. I, 27 year old female, have been dating my boyfriend two and a half years, 37 year old male. Before we were together, he made me aware he had issues with alcohol, but since had help and it was under control. The last seven months have been heck. He'll drink at least three times a week. He either doesn't touch alcohol or is absolutely smashed or obliterated with alcohol. He will drink at least three bottles of rum when doing so. Nine times out of ten, he'll continue it the next day too in the morning. It is horrific. It can be random, he can say it's because something's been on his mind but never once expressed it, or that he's happy. I can't cope with it anymore. I have a seven-year-old little girl at home, not his, but she adores him. She's thankfully not sussed the issues yet, but this isn't something I want her to be around or grow up around. I left her bio dad because of his abuse to drugs and behaviors. I wouldn't say this was much better. However, my boyfriend says it's my fault that I don't help him out at his lowest, that he always helped me. The issue is, I can't. When he's had a drink, I am the worst person in the world. It's all my fault. He brings things up from the past that I can't change. I've begged him to get help, but he is adamant he doesn't need help and that I'm the reason. If I end the relationship, he'll just drink himself silly living on his own in the middle of nowhere. He just started a job, and I'm worried this is going to go down the drain as he rings in sick frequently due to either being horrendously hungover or still drinking. I am drained with it all. How can I get out of this situation? I don't think this can be considered a fringe thing or just a slight problem. This seems like a very serious thing. I feel like OP has every right to share their concerns with them, but at some level they have to understand that it's not their responsibility to fix them. I think at some point the question actually needs to start being, is it even reasonable to keep having your kid and your life wrapped around this guy with these behaviors he's exhibiting? Our next story is, my 36 year old male, wife 34 year old female and I disagree about work trips. My job occasionally requires me to stay away from home, maybe three times a year, normally just for one night, but sometimes as long as three. More often, maybe six times a year, I need to attend evening events for my job which I host. My wife, together five years, married for one, always takes issues with this. We have an argument every time I have to stay away. Her reasoning is that I'm not paid for that time, so I shouldn't have to stay away for work. My reply is that it's in my contract, thus covered by my salary. Her response is that I should change my contract. I'm mid-management, hardly able to dictate contractual adjustments. We have similar arguments whenever I have to host a daytime event. She insists these are pointless now that video conferencing exists, glossing over the soft benefits of meeting in person like networking. I'm working on bringing a new person on board who can, at least, take most of the evening event hosting away, but that will take time. I can, within reason, ask my two team members to take some of those events on too, but the majority will still fall to me as the manager. My wife works from home five days a week but that's relatively new. Before that, she had a hybrid job, and before that was on site every day. I never complained, and I wouldn't now if she had to attend events. I realize that some jobs just require that, but she doesn't seem to. Her worldview tends to black and white, which we've talked about before. I'm sure there's more to this, but I'm equally sure it's not the desire for more time together. I work from home at least four days a week, and we have most evenings together. I think the important thing here is why does she feel this way? Can she put into words what actually bothers her here? Is it just they want you around more and it's frustrating to them? I mean, is it enough that it becomes a deal breaker? Maybe some counseling should be needed. This next story is telling my friend I don't want to be around her dog. I, 31 year old female, have a close friend, 29 year old female, that got a dog a few months ago. It's huge, cattle dog, pit bull mix. 
Not a puppy and terribly trained. My friend's been taking it to training classes, which is great, but it seems to not be working so well. To be honest, I don't think she fully knows what she's doing with regards to training it. For instance, she lets the dog bite her, which I've tried to mention she shouldn't be doing, but she insists her childhood dogs were big play biters too. It's miserable to hang out with, because if we go out in public, it lunges towards everyone and barks at them. And she insists on bringing it everywhere. It's worse at her apartment where we used to hang out frequently because she lives so nearby. I hate going there because I get jumped on, bitten, and absolutely covered with dog fur, and she'll just be like, oh, haha, the dog loves you. So it's to the point where I'm kind of avoiding her because I don't want to deal with the dog, and she's complaining that we don't hang out as much anymore, and I don't know what to do or how to tell her. I mean, I think it's a very valid reason to not want to go over to their place, to not want to hang out with them. Honestly, I think LP would be doing them a favor just being honest and telling them, but I also understand if they just don't want to deal with that drama, especially with somebody who just falsely believes that they're being a great dog mom. Our next story is, I feel like a mom to my boyfriend and I don't know what to do. Me, 20 year old female, and my boyfriend, 21 year old male, have been dating for two years and he has a tendency to be extremely irresponsible. He's been switching in between jobs frequently because he's been fired for not showing enough initiative, being lazy, being late, and other similar things. Due to that, he's been struggling financially. We don't live together, but he stays in my place very often and we used to have an agreement that if he stays at mine, he would get us food. But recently he's been avoiding that topic and asking me to pay for everything. I understand that he's not in a good position financially, however I think the agreement is needed for things to work out, and for it to not feel like only one person does all the work. I drive him home a lot, to school, to work, when he does have a job, and although it might not seem like it costs a lot, he has never offered to pay for gas in my life. Every time I bring it up, he says, oh it's fine, it doesn't cost you that much anyway. I don't agree because over time it adds up and it bothers me a lot. I don't know if I'm wrong and I shouldn't expect a lot from him, but I just wish he would have a bit more of a backbone and stand up for himself in his decisions instead of agreeing to just being kicked out of his job or agree with everything his mom tells him to do. I've talked about these issues to him before, but not much changes even when I think we sorted things out. He's very loving and caring, but I wish I didn't have to feel like a mom to him about cleaning up after himself, finding a job, doing schoolwork, and similar things. What should I do and is there anything that would change him? I mean, if you talk through these issues and he's not showing any initiative, I don't know what really is going to change because he has to be the one that wants to change, that wants to do better. It all starts with him and if he's happy enough to just be complacent and let things go on as it is, I don't know if there's anything you can do yourself to fix him. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. Now if you want to hear another tricky relationship topic, check out that video on the left. Or if you missed my latest video, check out that video on the right. That said, I'll see you all next time with some more stories.